A lot of you have been asking for this, so in this video, I'll be going through my process on how I create case studies for my portfolio website. Hi, I'm Alfred, a freelance designer here in Toronto, and I just recently came back from a six months journey across Southeast Asia, and now that I'm back, I'm planning to get my design career back on track. So I told myself, this is the perfect time to redesign, rethink, revolutionize my portfolio website. And with that, let's get started. Going into this, I don't have a clear strategy yet, so looking at my previous case studies was a good starting point. I noticed that I put a lot of detail in the processes I have on my case studies, and yes, this is important, but I realized it tend to be wordy and bury the actual designs on the bottom of the page. And I also want to position myself more as a visual and web designer, so I want to highlight the designs more and try to use shorter paragraphs to explain my thinking. This previous case study got me hired for a UI UX design job though, so if you want me to discuss more, please let me know. <laughs> to gain more insight, I watched more YouTube videos and looked at other portfolio websites again to have more inspiration. So I just finished researching and looking for reference materials for my case studies. And from all the videos I watch, I like Rachel's case study structure, but I think it's too detailed and too wordy for what I'm looking for. And then we have another side of the spectrum, which is Will Patterson's. He focuses more on showing the images for the logo and his process. And as for my case studies, I think I'm looking for something that's in between those two. I also finished sketching my wireframes, and I based the layout and structure on the different portfolios that I've seen online. And I noticed they have a similar pattern. So they start off with an intro or background of the company, then the goals and challenges, they put in their process, and then after that they show some mockups. And then for the finale, I'm gonna be showing some results or impact of the project. Yeah, I feel like this is a lot, but we can edit as we go. But for now, I feel like this is a very solid plan. So I'll open Figma and then work on the mid fidelity wireframes. Good morning! Yesterday, after finishing the designs for the mid-fidelity wireframes, I continued working on the copy of the case study, and I just wanted to share with you the guide questions that I asked myself to help me fill up the copy for each of the sections of the case study. First, we have the intro, and I asked myself, what is the background of the company or the project? So here you can include the story of the company and what makes them unique, and just give an overall view of the project. Next, we have the goals. What are the reasons that started this project? So it could be that a company is new, so they're looking for a logo and website to help them promote their business and find new leads and new clients. Next, we have the rationale for the branding and the website. For this section, I asked myself, what inspired me to make the design choices I did? Here, I included the thinking behind the branding and the logo I created. You know, think about how these design decisions help you tell a story and meet the goals of the project. And lastly, we have the results section. Here, I asked, how did the designs make an impact on the client's business? I'm honestly still unsure about this part, but for now, I'm planning to include a testimonial from the client and get some analytics to back up my design decisions. So with that done, my goal for today is to create the mockups for the case study, and I'll be starting by doing the main image on the page. So let's go. I downloaded this laptop mockup for free from Mockup Designs. I have it open in Photoshop here, and then added my designs. Now, this is already looking good, but I wanted to take it a step further by customizing the mockup. My idea was to make it look like the laptop was on top of a kitchen countertop, so we downloaded this spiral image from Unsplash. The perspective was a bit off, so I tried changing it using Lightroom. I brought back the edited image to Photoshop and realized there was really no significant difference between the two, so I just stuck with the original. I placed the image on my Figma file, but something was missing. I looked for stock photos again and downloaded this base image. I removed the background and placed it on my image, added a Gaussian blur, a drop shadow, and that added more depth to the mockup. 
So I'm sure a lot of people already use this mockup because it's for free. So by adding those customized images, it makes it more unique and more suitable for your project. And with that as a start, I'm gonna continue working on the mockups for the rest of the branding section of the case study. Good morning! Today we'll be doing the web design section of the case studies. So for this section, I want the main image to be a GIF, GIF or GIF. This is to show the whole layout of the landing page and the interactions in it. I opened Figma to set up the interactions of the carousel and then recorded the whole scrolling of the landing page. Then to edit the video, I opened Premiere Pro and export it when I'm done. And then I continued working on the rest of the mockups, and they had the same concept and idea from the main images I showed you earlier. And to show that the website is responsive, I created mockups for desktop, tablets, and mobile phones. And with all the content and mockup in place, these are the designs for this case study. After this, I plan to include this page on my website, but if you're interested in looking at it now, I also added a case study on Behance. This is a great base for my case study, so I expect my future ones to follow the same format. And I can't believe my portfolio is almost done. Hopefully, I can also launch the website very soon. So be sure to subscribe so you don't miss out. Thank you!